So she's just going to give us hand signs. Okay. So uh, good evening, everyone. <laughs> uh, these uh, meetings are being recorded for audio and video. We ask that everybody, uh, myself included, please put your cell phones on silent or vibrate. That way you don't disturb the overall flow of the meeting. And uh, for anybody that is interested, we do have masks and hand sanitizer. Uh, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the December 17th, 2022 workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Yeah. Second. 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 Oh, roll call. Peter? Aye. Irene? Irene is indicating thumbs up. And Jim? Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for the December 22nd Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. I roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene? Indicating thumbs up. <laughs> and Jim? Aye. Okay, next is to approve the minutes of the January 3rd, 2023 reorganization meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene? She's indicating thumbs up. And Jim? Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Um, Would you want to say that the minutes from the January? Uh, I mean, I, I can. So the, the minutes of the January 21st, 20, uh, 21st, 2023 workshop meeting have not been completed, so we'll be tabling that item until next time. Um, Irene normally gives the treasurer's report. However, uh, since Irene is having audio issues, um, Irene, is there anything that needs to be highlighted for last month? You can give me a simple thumbs up, thumbs down, shake head, whatever. So no items need to be highlighted. It was pretty standard. There weren't any bills out of the ordinary as we closed out the year. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the payment of the bills for January, 2023. Second. One roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Irene is indicating thumbs up. And Jim. Aye. Okay. At this time, I'll open the floor for public comments. As a reminder, anyone wishing to address the board, please do so by stepping up towards the microphone in the center of the room and clearly state your name and address for the record. If you have not already done so, please sign in on the sheet in the front of the room as well. I'm Jim Valadini, and I'm a resident of Marion Town. Could you state your address, please, for the record? At 198 Sweet Birch Lane in Wormelsburg. Um, first, my, my first presence tonight is to, again, for the last time, embarrass Peter for the work that he's done <laughs> for the development of our audiovisual system. It's fantastic, and I encourage anybody to come down and see it. Uh, I hope. <laughs> that our Zoom system would work better. But well, I'll, I'll be connecting with Irene and we'll be making sure that there's not some wire across somewhere. <laughs> okay. but. Then the other issues are questions for the solicitor's office and, and the engineer that we mentioned on Saturday. We have had communications from Landmark first that they intended to convey parcels of property from the plots plan to us. Um, and then inside of a week, they actually sent us confirmation that they had conveyed property. And I don't know enough to know that that's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, maybe the solicitor's office would know enough to say, is conveyance generally a one-sided issue? Neither the, the township nor the, I. The, the declaration and the bylaws control the rights and obligations of the party. So without reviewing those documents, I can't really give you an answer. Um, well, it, I will share with you that the parcels that they conveyed, probably two thirds of what they were conveying were the parcels that adjoin William Penn and probably are inconsequential in that there's few, if any, mechanicals along that parcel of land um, that would be a test for the engineer or, or for the development. Well, actually, if I can, so on January 9th, I had received from the township an email that included a number of uh, exhibits identifying, I assume you're talking about the various parcels that were called lot 215. That's correct. They That's were open space yep. lots. 
And as a matter of fact, uh, there was one parcel that, um, as described by these exhibits that I noted should probably not be dedicated to the HOA because it is along William Penn Boulevard and appeared to be the right of way um, that was required to be dedicated to the township along okay. that public street. So I'm really interested to hear how Landmark went about dedicating and if they did dedicate all these um, parcels, including that which should be the right of way that should have went to Marion Township. Um, so I oh. had copied the solicitor on that and the supervisors, but I don't know that my comments got back to anyone at Landmark um, because this created somewhat, and I guess I need some, some direction from um, the Board of Supervisors, um, there's a number, it seems like a number of issues that seem to come up related to the Homeowners Association and the Stonecroft Village development and the developer. And, you know, in representing the township, I, I struggle sometimes with what the township should be taking on with regard to the um, these matters between the developer and the HOA. Yeah, it, this is like the third engineer now in this process. I, I feel for you in the project, trying to figure what was done and what wasn't done. I will share with you that early on in the plots and plans, it put the, en the township engineer, at that time was of no concern to you, but now probably is, um, that, that they would be supervising the project and demanded before anything proceeded any further that funds be transferred for that very purpose, that you would oversight the construction. Well, the engineer would oversight the construction. Uh, uh, again, there, there is, you know, as part of the subdivision and land development plan process, there mm -hmm. is financial security established by the developer in the name of the township to ensure the improvements are completed as indicated on the plan. And that is certainly an obligation I think the township would follow through with um, but you know to what limit does the township engineer via direction from the board of supervisors supervise is not a word I want to use regarding the construction operations out there okay um, unless the board would work to direct me to that um, so again there needs to be some establishment of what is the role of the township in dealing with the private transaction between the HOA and the developers in this case. Now, with these open space lots, and I had in, in my email, I mean, I, I would think, you know, somebody representing the HOA should be evaluating the condition of those open space lots. The improvements were there. I heard before the meeting started about some trees that might have been dead. Um, but it, advising the HOA as to the condition of that, those properties before you accept the dedication. So I'm really surprised to hear that somehow this just happened and Landmark did this and, and somehow got it recorded. Um, but again, neither myself and I don't believe the solicitor um, was party to any of that, you know, these goings on between the private deal. We weren't privy that email over to you, I was having to be talking to Dan at the time, and I was confused because my understanding of the whole subdivision process was there was a process that you had to go through to divide parcel up. Well, was, the, the parcels were subdivided via the original subdivision. Oh, okay. Because like when you yeah. look at the parcel on like so, the, the GIS maps, it's still one piece. Um, yeah, 
because I did that too. When yeah. you click on any of these open space lot, it yeah. kind of refers to them all collectively as 215. And that's how they were noted on the subdivision. Plan. Okay. Okay. So it was all collectively these little pieces, even though they're individual and not contiguous prop pieces of property. Yeah. They've all been identified as open space 215. Okay. The um, other the other thing that was confusing is I always thought when you convey something, there it's not a unilateral thing. Like correct. you have to somebody has to accept it. You can't just drop something off at somebody's doorstep, ring the doorbell, and run. So these are questions that should really be presented to the board of the HOA. Okay. Because I'm I'm relatively confident that the board of the HOA probably acted on that request for dedication. Well, I, I think we have a majority of the board of the HOA here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, they they, they hopefully this. I think in the document it said something. The reason I say that this particular is conveyed in it. it talked about a single dollar fee. And I think that was for us to consume. And it, it said that they produced the single dollar fee, that we did not. I mean, yes, yes, but you thought it was going to be easy, didn't you? <laughs> well, does, does, the, does the HOA board have legal representation? And did you have a discussion with him about this process at all? You no, know, we thought we'd bring it to you first to see if if maybe the conveyance was between I'm, the township and I'm, and uh, well, well, you need, you need, you need, well, well, so the, the the HOA is is a separate and distinct entity from the township. So I can't give the mm -hmm. HOA advice, but I would tell you that the dedication is probably done pursuant to the terms in the declaration. So you might want to go read that declaration and and. Um, you know, determine how these types of land dedications are supposed to happen. Okay. And is, is it common practice for lots to be subdivided? Exclusive the, of us. The lots were subdivided again when the original plan was reported. No, a single lot, 215, right. subdivided. It was subdivided when that subdivision plan was reported, in essence. It created those separate pieces. Yep. Okay. And, the, and they were in the name of the developer at that time, according to the tax map that I looked at. Then, of course, him being the owner, the developer being the owner of those lots, proceeded to offer dedication to the HOA. As I understand it, I don't want to talk legal, usually there is an acceptance that has to happen. Because um, you can't just give property to somebody. I wish somebody would do that, but maybe not. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it seems like an odd thing to complain about, doesn't it? <laughs> it's it's weird to it come here and say somebody gave us a bunch of land. That we thought that maybe we could store some of the assault for you. <laughs> we get into an issue about, but it, so, that was just I, again. I, I, I don't know. No survey. A survey that says this piece is only marked out on the drawing with this segment. They haven't gone to and resurveyed them. They, they typically would not be surveying. Right. The question would be, you know, from the subdivision plan, they were created. They're, they're, they're the gray spots on the subdivision plan. So, again, they were described in the subdivision plan with meets and bounds, whether or not property corners got set. Um, I, I don't know, but they would not need to resurvey them per se, except for the purposes of as built drawings. To, that would typically be provided for the stormwater, perhaps some of the utilities, although the township's not only any utilities there, um, to demonstrate that they were built in accordance with the plan. They had a kind of survey around looking at the um, or sewer. Okay. Software. So those as built plans are, are typically something that the township would receive and they would be reviewed for conformance with the original plans prior to the release of any financial security um, or the last of the financial security for, for the developer. Well, that, that speaks to a single concern also. As I said, there isn't a lot of, now the piece of property that belongs to you, I can see where that would be a, a different issue for you, um, but I, there isn't a lot of utilities or working parts in those. It, it is open space except for the storm sewer, um, pipes and swales and what have you. Um, and as a matter of fact, I know that the township received a complaint from other residents about what's called the infield. 
oh, portion. Okay. Will be provided. Okay. <laughs> and and the fact that that was holding water, which for the original plan, it was not intended to hold water. It was to be swale. Was, there was a swale there with positive flow. However, I suspect that <laughs> there's an NPDS permit that was issued for that project. That's issued by DEP to do the earth moving activities. And those are typically good for five years. If one expires, the developer has to go back and reapply for that permit and meet whatever the current standards are at that time. And it's, it's only my suspicion that perhaps that happened. And when he went to get a new permit, he was required to do something to a higher standard than what was originally done. And that meant over excavating the bottom of that infield to hold some water and promote infiltration. But I can't confirm that. And I was waiting for, again, some more direction from the township to simply make a call to the Berks County Conservation District and see if I could piece together why that deviation occurred from the plan. Um, so what happened was that was exactly the case. It expired and they came up with a new plan. Mm -hmm. The new plan defined infiltration. Mm -hmm. They tested it and it failed. So they're now at some sort of a transition yeah. here where they're, they're trying to come up with a, a controlled release this is from landmark engineer. They're trying to come up with some sort of controlled release that will meet the BDP Berks uh, County Conservation. Yeah, because if, if they if they applied for and got a new NPDS permit, but, and with the intention and meeting the requirements for infiltration, typically test soil testing is done before that permit's issued or in support of that permit. Once the permit's issued, the construction happens. If it does not perform as it was intended, now they have to go back and modify that NPDS permit yet again. Um, so that's probably where they are. And my concern, of course, is I believe that was one of the lots that we received the legal description for, for dedication. I think not. I, you I think, think that one was excluded? Well, when I... There, there was a legal description provided for that lot. The only one that was not provided, I believe. Let me say, I thought it was around the pond. Specifically addressed in this letter. Well, again, I, you know, this is so complicated. And actually, I just had a call today from a uh, uh, fire uh, sprinkler suppression company that was directed by Landmark to do some hydrant testing out there for the dry hydrants on the pond. See, I know it's just enough to be dangerous. And, and he was looking for parameters for that test, what would be required. That I could not answer right off the top of my head because I got to do a little research and see what was required at the time the plan was approved. So there's many different levels going on here and I'm just not, you know, for the sake of this meeting and, and uh, the best use of our time, again, I need direction from the board. Solicitor will need direction from the board to look into these matters. Oh, 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 yeah, I'll just I'll just say this. So obviously, land developers aren't in the business of owning land, right? They're in the business of selling it, uh, developing it, and selling it. Now, the land developer does draft the declaration that governs the creation of the HOA and how how it will operate. And so I, I would not be surprised if the declaration says that when a certain, a certain percentage of the lots are sold or occupied, that it has the ability to dedicate the open space to the HOA because the HOA is the body tasked with ultimately maintaining the common areas for the development. So I, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, but, but ultimately, right now, this is essentially an issue between two private parties, right? The developer wants to convey some of the common areas to the HOA, and, you know, the HOA isn't really willing to accept them for whatever reason. And I would say, ultimately, that's, that's really a, an issue to be resolved between two private parties. I don't think that the township should really be providing legal advice to a, a separate 
legally recognized entity. Okay. Yeah, I'll, just one point of clarification. So the infield and the pond, the wet pond, were not being offered for dedication. So that's, that's correct. Right. And, and, and that makes sense from the developer standpoint because he needs to control those two things so he can get that MBDS permit satisfied and closed out for the infield and also possibly the pond and the, the, the uh, dry uh, standpipes that are there. So those two weren't there. I am concerned about the one area out along um, William Penn Boulevard, and whether or not that was dedicated. So if you received information of what was recorded and transferred into the HOA name, um, that would be beneficial if we could have a copy of that, just so we can stay up to speed on what's going on here. Um, and I, I would just recommend that you take the declaration to the HOA's attorney for his review. It probably wouldn't take him that long. And he, I'm sure he can probably give you an answer as to whether the HOA actually needs to act to accept the dedication of the common areas. It may, it may not, it may not have to act. The declaration may say the HOA is required to, to accept that land when a certain number of the units are occupied or sold. The landmark is still responsible for the infield and the pond. Well, at this point, they have not, at least from Based yeah, on the exhibits good. that I received, yeah. they, they, there was not an indication that they were pursuing dedication at this time. So there's, there's still there's problems with both of these. Mm -hmm. yeah, they need to I, I agree. And, uh, and uh, the conservation district is going to say they need to resolve too, especially in the infield that's holding water. Mm -hmm. And on the pond side, making sure that the dry standpipe is there and functioning and so forth. I understand years ago there was issues with the intake and clogging and some things like that so yeah we want to make sure that's working and that's going to be an issue forever because it's snails well, i was but, told today apparently they, they they modified the intake to lift it up off the, off the bottom of the pond with the hopes that the snails which we can get you're, snails out you're, you're, uh, you're still going to suck in snails and everything and the, and the yeah. fire department yeah. will not use it because yeah destroy the pump. right because they will go have to take yeah. the pumps and it won't, it won't be any water. Um, yeah, so a number of different factors here. And, and, and again, landmark's going to have to have to apply because we're not. Part, part of this problem is communication. We get no communication from landmark. Mm -hmm. And we don't need it. Never notify us when they're going to do anything. They sneak in into the middle of the they do something and then they say, oh, it's fixed, it's fine. The township doesn't get any notification mm -hmm. either. Right. And the right. township certainly should be entitled to that notification because they're the ones that have to finally sign off on the plans of the development that has been done properly. That's supported by the bond. How much money are we going to have to release? Verifying that they go through the drawing, such there is in compliance with the drawing. The, uh, I think the clubhouse is also just part of that. Not done yet. Not finished there. And we look this good yeah. about what it was and what it Yeah, I, I just had clubhouse doesn't mention the discussion in the area of the I would just ask, and it's a petition that prior to moving on any further bond moving, you you wait to hear from our attorney. That's I just ask Peter how much money we're holding. It's a, it's a significant it's a, amount. It's a pretty we'll sizable. It's yeah. a pretty sizable. Yeah. We're not going to release it. There won't be a, a number of meetings. And maybe he'll say, you can't do that. Well, I'll make sure to communicate with you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, if you wouldn't mind, Getting get the, you, what was sure. what you were served with, or what you received as far as what was dedicated. Yeah, and um, it's very detailed. It, it, it is. It goes to, I guess, Latin long geopoints on each piece, and they did arcs where they couldn't use. Yeah, the, the, there were. It was the exhibits that I probably I received. There were, um, you know, meets and bounds description of each one of those individual parcels. 
that's what you're referring to. But each parcel is a separate drawing. In Correct. It is shown as a separate drawing, although the, and they are separate properties, although the subdivision plan referred to them all collectively as lot 215. I'll make sure that you have two weeks. Okay. One, one of the Thank bits you. of trivia is the southeast corner of the property is designated a tree. And it's not known as that tree is actually there. <laughs> and the landmark was asked, yeah, survey and verify that where that corner is, that southeast corner. Oh, the property corner for the perimeter of the whole development. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the two that's being lost. Um, so, uh, <laughs> that's up on the hillside, isn't it? In the back corner, yes. on the hill. And 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 indeed, there could be a big old tree right on that corner. Now, the question would be: typically, you wouldn't remove the tree to put a pin there, but you might put pins offset from that so that you could project or somehow determine where the corner was. That was requested the landmark along with a full set of as-built drawings. Uh, yeah, That's yeah and, and you know, that, in my opinion, should have happened before this dedication happened. But again, not knowing how that process was set up in the bylaws, they may have done what they set up to do. I don't remember reading that kind of detail in the bylaws. So, Chuck, when this is all said and done, township should get a set of as built. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, I would I would be looking for that before the the, the last of the financial securities release, um, and and that might go as far as also you know if there's deviations just. You know, say a pipe storm pipe shown to be at two percent. Sometimes they end up one point eight percent, what have you. But and we would look for anything that was significantly deviant from the original plans, and may even ask for um, or require uh, the stormwater pond to be uh, like an as-built analysis of that provided to okay. make sure that that's uh, would function as it was originally intended. Which are there any issues out there with drainage in that pond and well, anything? There's there's sediment in the pond, which they had told us was going to come out, but they must have done a survey of the pond. They told us without showing us the survey that says there's the sediment's only so deep that it's not going to increase the volume of the pond of water. Um, one of the other requests I would put to the town is make sure you get an electronic copy of those documents. Mm -hmm. We asked Landmark for that so that in the future, if we had to do something with electronic copies, they flatly refused us. Mm -hmm. But um, I think an electronic copy would be much better to just your town yeah. archives too, rather than more people for a fire. Yeah, I think there is a certain legal requirement that we have to we have to have a physical plan, but I'm a big fan of electronic copies. Too, and and so. I am too, and a lot of municipalities have been updating the ordinances mm -hmm. to require that. I would have to review the ordinance uh, for Marion Township to see if that would indeed digital documents need to be provided in addition to the paper. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure there will be more to come on that too as time progresses. But thank you. Thank you for the comments. Um, any other public comments? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move into the main items for agenda for this evening. The first is the Act 537. Uh, the SEO has been doing inspections in the Northwest District and has sent out letters to the property owners in the East District as well. The East District needs to be pumped out during the 2023-2024 uh, years. Hydroterra Professionals has completed the uh, existing dwelling unit evaluation for the proposed sewer service area and submitted a sewer design comparison which provides conceptual costs for a gravity low pressure and pumping station along with an alternative plan for low pressure only. Um, Attorney George is working on a draft of a new intermunicipal agreement with the WSA and is awaiting for a response from the DEP about our revised timeline that we had sent over. Um, I know we had talked a little bit about it on Saturday at the workshop, uh, but the plan, the comparison that Hydroterra provided us uh, did an evaluation of the already approved design that was sent in of the 
combination gravity store pump station with a, a small low pressure store, uh, which had a total project cost projection of $10.4 million. And the alternative system, which was a low pressure store, was uh, 6.4 million. So it was just around half. Um, there's going to be some additional things that they supply to us that we can continue to look over in terms of um, if there's maybe a, a mix of the two that they had suggested where um, gra gravity sewer obviously is more expensive from an excavation cost standpoint, but it's generally cheaper maintenance over the course of its life, uh, whereas low pressure systems are cheaper to install but require a little more ongoing maintenance. So we'll have more on that, but uh, we have a, a very, very well-written comparison of uh, what's currently on the plan versus what some other options may be for um, how to attack this in a cost-effective uh, manner. So, Peter, Kimberly called me this week and she said if the board has any questions, she will welcome them. Okay, Feel excellent. free to call her. Okay. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is we just need to... We, one, we need to know that the DEP has accepted our revised timeline. Um, and then we need to have the kind of the third option in that they had suggested of keeping the plan largely the same, but moving the pump station. Because they said that would reduce cost um, pretty significantly because then that would change the dynamic of what sections were low pressure, what sections were gravity. Uh, but we'll have to start looking at this because it's going to affect what we ask for grants for. Um, and there's, there's a lot of grant opportunities out there right now. Um, we've been trying for certain things. Um, we have an LSA grant that was submitted. Um, Kim and I went, as we talked about on the, the Saturday meeting, uh, to that convention in Reading that the county commissioners were holding. And uh, we found out that they have some loans, some subsidized loans, but that the, uh, the ARP money that they were going to carve up, they're keeping the majority of it as a reserve, um, which is interesting. But uh, we're pursuing every avenue that we possibly can because, to put it flatly, uh, we won't be able to do this unless we get enough grants. Like, there's, there's no way that we will sign off on, on doing this if it can't be afforded. And it's not a, an unwillingness to comply with regulatory requirements or anything like that. It's that, and Jim, don't let me put words in your mouth, but I think as a board, we refuse to, to, to ghost town Stouchburg over this. If it has to be done, so be it, but the, the expectation from us to the other levels of government is that we be given the right tools to do it. Okay, uh, unless you have anything to add, Jim, I'll move on to the next item. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item is the emergency management coordinator, emergency maps and training. Um, we have quotes for flood pump kits and hazmat equipment. Uh, the membership at the Bucks County Community College for training. Uh, John spoke about that. Uh, that, I believe, was $1,300, and it would be something that the entire fire department could use. Um, they would get uh, a large number of hours that they could take in training as part of that that would cover all sorts of safety courses and, and other updates. Um, I don't know. Let me actually flip through the packet and see if I can find that. It's, it's in there. I know it's in there but I got I to gotta flip through it. I sort of have them in order as I scan them. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Okay, so here it is. So here's the map. It's the end of that. So one of the things John wanted was the oil absorbent map for spills. He has that as a hazmat item. Some other absorbent things. There's a bunch of absorbents. Yeah. Um, have that as hazmat equipment. Irene, would it, you just give me a thumbs up, thumbs down sort of thing. Um, the hazmat stuff, is that is that collected anywhere? Like, do we have a grand total for hazmat? Yes, it's on the first page of the, of the hazmat. Peter, look. Yeah. This is- That was, the, the, okay, that was, I thought that was page. the total for just that one item, because there's like no, six no. items. That total is all of those okay. pad things. Okay, so I'll go through, I'll list everything out and I'll give the, the cost off the first page. So uh, John has specified some oil absorbent mats, some oil, oil absorbent pillows, quote unquote, that are uh, for water-based solvents, um, oil absorbent booms, uh, socks, okay. and uh, absorbent mats. 
And if we want, I can show up some pictures then, but I don't know if that's 100% necessary. Um, the total cost for the hazmat items is $1,072.44. Um, so we have a number of motions on here. I'll go through everything and then we'll kind of circle back around. Um, the next thing is the pump out kits. The pump out kits are a total of Let's see if there's a total list in here. Um, pump out project total for the first one for the electric pump kits is $399.93. A light duty gas water pump, $589.98. And the three inch trash pumps, I don't have a total here. It's about $2,100. It's, it's on this sheet? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at the bottom one. Doesn't have a total. And then he got me quotes. Two different Edwin's. Okay. That's all, all I have. Okay. So let's cover what I can effectively do. So I'll make a motion to approve the hazmat items for a total of. $1,072.44. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Irene, I think, is abstaining. She's abstaining. Yep. And uh, Jim? Aye. So, Sue, so the three inch trash pumps, am I, am I just going blind or is that not on there for the total? Because I see. I see the the, yeah. the bullets, but I don't. Mine doesn't have a total line on the bottom. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's. Yeah, so what I'm going to suggest is I'll call John about the pump kits because there's, there's too many things here. I'm not sure which thing goes to what. So what I want to do is I want to have, here's the, the total cost for this kit. Here's, here's the, this is, is this one? Oh, no. Now, see, like, like I said, we're just, we're going to put a pin in that for a second. We'll, we'll circle back to that at the next meeting, but I want to have a, a price tag, so to speak, of each one of the kits is going to cost this. We want to order X number of the kits, um, which unfortunately I don't think the, the stuff is in, in a state to be able to, to easily and quickly do that. So uh, next in that is the agenda, or excuse me, not the, the agenda, the membership, uh, which is that. That is this one. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want it? No, no, I'm looking at it. Okay. That's why I want to make sure I'm reading off the right thing. Okay, so this is for the annual membership fee of $1,300 per calendar year per organization, um, which includes a maximum or is usable up to a maximum of 200 hours of on site or online non certification training courses. Um, minimum of 15 candidates, uh, maximum of 24 candidates for the hazmat awareness uh, national certification test. Um, I think this is a, a good thing that we can offer the, the fire department. So I would say, let's do it. I'll make a motion to authorize the bronze membership for the Bucks County Community College. Second. On a roll call. Peter? Hi. Hi. Irene? She's abstaining. She's abstaining. <laughs> and Jim. Hi. 
Okay. And the maps, I think we just have to motion authorize or ask Chuck to print out yeah. some maps. Yeah. Um, so I received uh, a request uh, or actually an email with, with a, a very detailed list of exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the various sizes and colors and um, laminated. So we're good. I, I did have a couple questions for that. And okay. Irene, I don't know. You, you got my email back and I, I, I was waiting for a response back from, uh, from John, I guess. Will that be forthcoming? Yeah. She's going to put something in the chat. Okay. okay. So if the nod suffices, otherwise, if you put it in the chat, I'll read it off. Yeah. The, the other thing, um, John will reach out to you. Great. Thank you. Um, the other thing was in, in preparing some of the maps, you know, the paper costs are one thing, which is pretty nominal. Um, the effort is, is preparing the map, you know, in, in a digital format. And so, of course, the previous engineer has some mapping here, you know, and I wanted to Sue and I were talking about, you know, approaching McCarthy Engineering, perhaps get some of those digital files, which will help greatly help. You know, we're not starting from scratch at that point. Mm. Um, I can we, but we can, and we can still do it pretty efficiently. Yeah, but I mean, don't, don't reinvent and, the wheel if you don't have to. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's fine. We yeah. can do that. So I, I'm actually, uh, before I left the offices this afternoon, uh, someone's looking into that because we wanted to call. We, we don't do laminating, but we... You know, print a stat or some of the other companies around can do that for us. So we either send them the digital file, they print it out, and then they laminate it. And get to, so we're trying to get you a complete package price okay. for all the maps okay. that he, he had requested. I so, can show you the digital maps I have, and I don't have many. They're all kind of sewer related. Yeah, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else we can reach out to McCarthy Engineering mm -hmm. and see if they can send it over to us. Yeah. I mean, if it if it if it doesn't take us that long, which a lot of it's available public information, and mm -hmm. we can generate maps relatively easily for his purposes, yeah. which is for planning and emergency coordinating and what have you. So um, I'll, I'll have some numbers and uh, as soon as I hear from John, I'll just a couple clarifications of what he wanted. Because he asked for some, some sizes that we can print out, but the one dimension was a little big. So we'll, we'll okay. see, you know. Okay. Uh, otherwise, again, we can take the digital file to, to a printer stat or something like that and, and have them, you know, print it out. So, okay, awesome. So we'll get back to you on that once I hear from John. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Dutch Valley Foods distribu uh, Distributors. Uh, their request for the LERTA or ALERTA. We received an application for the status uh, and then an ordinance was adopted in November creating the district. We need to adopt an ordinance to approve the tax exemption. Motion was made at the December Board of Supervisors meeting to authorize the solicitor to draft the ordinance and uh, advertised for adoption. Um, has that been completed? Yeah, so so I, I conferred with council after the December meeting. Mm -hmm. um, he believes that the township doesn't need to enact another ordinance. So in that case, I'm satisfied with his recommendation that we just take a motion tonight to ex to grant um, the Dutch, Val Dutch Valley's uh, application for tax exemption. Okay. Uh, So Irene just actually had somebody else put something in the chat. So Brandon Sweeney put in the chat is absolutely necessary for our fire department to have the hazmat items. Every county has type two HMRT teams. There are also type one HMRT teams stationed throughout the state that can respond to those types of events. However, I'm not exactly sure where they all are out of. Just thought analysis wasn't done on the need. Um, so there's there's a lot of things actually covered in that program, Brandon. Uh, the hazmat stuff is, is a good component of it. And we think having uh, the first responders that are right on our doorstep have that training is, is going to be beneficial to us. It's certainly worth, worth the $1,300 for the year. Um, but uh, back to the LERTA item. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the Dutch Valley Food Distributors tax exemption LERTA request. Second. On a roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. She's indicating thumbs up. And Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item is the benches for the skating rink. Uh, Jim, you kind of took the helm on this one. You want to say a few words? Uh, the benches are over there. I picked those up today. And uh, 
they're adequate. They're not good. You know, for what they cost, they're very adequate, I guess. <laughs> but they are here. Okay, good. And for everybody that was curious, Jim managed to uh, to get a couple of benches at a, an auction. Uh, we discussed it at the workshop meeting, and he managed to get two metal benches for forty dollars each. Uh, there was a twelve dollar buyer premium, so he got two or what, like four foot long benches, a little over four feet for ninety two dollars. So we've uh, contributed that towards the the playground stuff, so that when people go skating or or are using the park, that they have some more seating. The other item that Jim was able to pick up at the auction, I think it was at the auction, uh, was a podium, which is over there uh, for $30. It's a nice mm -hmm. looking podium for 30 bucks. Uh, so I'll be switching that around so that that's in the center of the room for next meeting rather than the table. You need to make a motion for that. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the, the purchase of the podium for $30. Second. Uh, Irene, you got a second? Okay, Irene's seconding. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Irene indicates <laughs> aye. Jim. <laughs> aye. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is the CWPLD on 37 Main Street. This is the self-storage units. Uh, we are still waiting for the property owner to sign the improvements agreement and the stormwater agreement and provide the financial surety letter of credit. Um, until they do that, we can't really do anything else. We're just in kind of a waiting so I've heard from them um, yesterday or today, um, and they're they're they're, they're still doing along that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think the latest was they they, they had asked about changing some the fence to some fence, degree yeah. and possibly uh, some of the pavement on that site, which is private. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Yeah. Um, so they're obviously, you know, Living doing their yeah. diligence as they try and move yeah. ahead. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next is the Creekview Dairy Operations at 952 Route 419. We are still waiting on the property owner to amend their NPDES permit and or revise the plans to address the situation by providing a corrective action plan. This would include, uh, or this could indicate uh, an alternative means for the treatment that might require additional site construction or justify what was constructed will provide similar results. Uh, Engineer Hess may or may not have an update on that. I know you had looked at that previously. Yeah, I had it in, in, in my report okay. uh, dated January 26. Um, I believe the son, um, Yolan Brubaker, uh, I just sent an email Tuesday um, with an update. You want it? Indicating they're they're trying to um, yeah so they're trying to get uh, the conservation district to back off a little bit on their corrective action plan and what that was with regard to and they made some deviations from the MPDS permit <laughs> and the conservation district as a result would not close out the MPDS permit the other extenuating factor was the permit had expired. Um, so they're trying to work through that. And at least from what he indicated, they're waiting to hear back from, from the first County Conservation District. And then hopefully with that issue resolved uh, or direction provided by the county, they'll work towards, um, you know, closing out the project, not only with first county, but with uh, the township, uh, provide the as-built drawings uh, so their financial security can be released. Steady as she goes. Okay. Next is the Colbert projects. Uh, Monarch will revise the schedule to do Marion Drive North as the second item on the list instead of Marion Drive South. Uh, they have the Reichert Road Colbert fabricated and are waiting for the green light from us. A pre-construction meeting with BCCD is needed. The road crew has also put down steel plates down at Marion Drive North and placed signs notifying drivers of those steel plates. Marion Drive South by Jake Weiss. We were notified that the BCCD um, would be considering this as eligible for the April 2023 DGLVR grants. Uh, we made a motion at the workshop meeting to authorize our engineer to submit the grant applications again to BCCD. Um, for the first item on the, the first culvert on the agenda, the, the Reichert Road one, um, there's a couple other items on the, the agenda tonight for the cranes and things like that. And we have Ryan and Butch in the audience. So um, Ryan and Butch, I may be asking questions when we get to that point, but um, since the 
the construction for it is is done and they're just waiting the only things that we really have to do is we have to rent the track hoe and we have to line up the crane correct okay so the next item on the agenda is the crane rental uh, we received quotes from dickinson and sons uh, crane rental and i'll actually let me share i'll just share this so everybody can see it Okay, so kind of complicated, but I put it into a table format. Uh, Dickinson and Sons gave us a crane rental uh, quote for eight hours per day at $4,200, overtime per hour over eight hours of $640, trucking and permits round trip of $1,100, a lift plan if required, which we're pretty sure is not going to be required. Um, a site visit is required to determine weight, radius, crane accessibility, et cetera. Uh, we have also received a quote from Griner with a daily rate of $3,280 for eight hours minimum, overtime rate of $460 over eight hours, fuel surcharge of 5%. Uh, mobilization is $3,750, uh, $3, uh, totaling $7,194 um, without the 5% fuel surcharge. Um, we, are also, we also got a quote from digging and rigging, uh, mobilization in and out uh, it was $3,749.20 both ways with a daily rate of $4,284.80 for eight hours. So the totals are Dickinson for $7,220, Reiner for $8,347, and Digging and Rigging for $11,783.20. Um, so based on that, I would make a motion that we authorize the rental of the crane from Dickinson. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? She indicates aye. And Jim? Yes. Aye. Uh, yeah, we make do. Um, it was just the, it's a ridiculous amount of money. Well, yeah, it's, it's, part of, it's, it's part of the, doing the, the project. We knew that going in when we had it costed out, but we have to place, they're all what, like 30 some of the most of them are like 36 tons or something like that the pieces yeah the heaviest one was 26 yeah so we're, we're talking about moving 26 ton pieces of, yeah. of concrete around it's it's no small thing um and they should be there for the next hundred years yeah hopefully we're doing this right it's not a not a repeatable thing I'm gonna hold you. all right I, i'll be here for <laughs> you, you call me i'll be here in a hundred years uh, next Do you item have on the schedule yet for when you want to start right up. Excellent. Do you have an anticipated duration for what you're uh, planning? Here. Are you going to be the lead then on the project out there? Butch and Ryan have kind of yeah. taken the, the, the point on it. Yeah. Yeah. He said we've designated him the project manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, there's just pre notification requirements for the permit. And as long as you have the plans on site and that permit on site, you know, in the truck, as you come and go. Um, but there's a requirement for a pre construction meeting. Um, yeah. yeah and i and and i would you know obviously be available to facilitate that make sure you know we all understand what the conservation district is looking for you know, talk about contingencies for weather and so forth um and just be there to help make sure you get it done right so we can close the permit out when it's when it's completed um it's an interesting time of the year to, to get started on something like that. But by some token, if the ground were frozen, it might be better too. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, there were some time limitations on when the, the work could be completed. And I'll just mention to you, because as we move to the other culverts, um, if there's time limitations like that too, we can ask for relief from, um, from those limitations. Um, and I can reach out. I've had success in the past doing that. Um, 
you know, it's, I forget which agency it was. I, I believe it was the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, but it might have been VA Fish and Boat. Um, they just want to know when you're doing it outside of that window in case they have activities, stocking or whatever in the stream so that they can, can plan accordingly and around it. Because I assume you're going to be pump bypassing. And that's that's their reason. You know, if, you, if they stocked upstream and the fish came down, they don't want to see the fish going through the pump. <laughs> sure. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Uh, but if they're aware of it, well, we'll have a we'll have a fish fry. We'll do that on a Friday, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, it's just stay in touch with me, and, and you know, I'll help help us. For um, Riker. Riker. I'm, I'm I sure think, we do. I think we have those. Yeah. I think we have those. I can print out a copy. You want an email? Okay. Um, yes, Record Road, I do have those plans. Um, and I have a copy of that permit too. So if you would like me to email that to you, okay. Will do. Right. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Remove the old. Of course, yeah. You, you are because unfortunately the crane rental you want to do all that in one day you want to have it delivered one yep. day offload it off the truck and set in place in that same day to minimize the crane rental time yep. that's where i'm at okay yep honing in on on a start date <laughs> Long range weather forecast, all that. Again. Okay. Uh, next is the track hoe rental for the Colbert projects. Uh, Ryan suggested we run a track hoe, which will allow us to dig faster than just having the backhoe. A week hoe will rent for a minimum of one week for $2,500 with a mobilization fee uh, or $7,500 per month with a mobilization fee. Uh, that was not disclosed what that fee was. Fisher Rental quoted a John Deere for 1920 per week or 5760 for four weeks with a delivery of $320 round trip. Uh, United Rentals quoted an excavator at $2,168 per week or $5,998 for four weeks with a delivery of $700 round trip. Stony Creek Rentals quoted a John Deere at $1,875 per week uh, or 5,625 for the four weeks with a delivery of 510 round trip. Plaster Equipment quoted the another John Deere uh, for $2,640 per week or $6,500 per month with a delivery of $500. Uh, Ryan has also supplied uh, a quote to rents from him, which is very competitive uh, and rates for uh, having an operator. So the everything totaled out, put it into a, a format, do you guys want me to share the screen again with that? And just to mention Stony Creek and um, Fisher's e piece of equipment is not as big as as the yeah. other two. So Plaster so and um, what was the other one? United Rental. Yes. Yeah. They're equivalent to what Ryan has. Yeah. So the, the Stony Creek and the Fisher, the two lower ones, are considerably smaller pieces mm -hmm. of equipment. United, Wico, and Plaster are, are similar size to what Ryan was quoting. Um, Ryan's quote for that would be the month would be $8,250 for the rental of uh, it's a, a Cabelco SK230 excavator. And then the, the we can go into the operator cost after that. But um, I think having the quick and easy access to Ryan and it being 
comparatively for that size piece of equipment, the lowest estimate or quote on estimate. Um, I'm going to motion that we authorize the uh, rental of the track hoe from uh, Allgaier Enterprises LLC. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Is gone? Aye. Oh, no. She's in. It's uh, she, thumbs up. She's because I'm sharing something. She's oh, okay. on the side. Yep. She says yes. <laughs> did you, you say, Jim? Did you get a yes from Jim? I did. Uh, okay. I didn't hear that. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, on Ryan's proposal is a uh, quote for the hourly rate of an operator for the excavator, uh, an hourly rate for the operator of a block backhoe with plate compactor. Uh, and an hourly rate for triaxle dump truck with driver. Um, would we need either of the two on the bottom? Because we have the back when we're talking about buying a plate compactor yeah, tonight. For, okay. Okay. Yep. I, I would say it's unless... Not, it's not a triaxle. Do we need a triaxle? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, I think I think we can make that work. So the the rate on here would be the uh, excavator um, with operator, um, based on the fact that the uh, actually hold on um, the price above was excavator no operator for the month. The difference in rate is the excavator with an operator is $125 an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so chan chances are you're going to be considerably less than. Um, so rough, rough figure, we have what, four days, four eight hour days? Five eight hour days. You don't have to give me an exact. Just okay. So that's five thousand. So it's considerably less, even beyond what the things were that I had on the screen. So um, that is good, um, Mr. Chairman. Just one question. Sure. Um, the uh... What township funds will be utilized? Will this be general this funds? General funds. Okay. Yeah. Because I know liquid fuels, liquid fuels has okay. all sorts of weird things, but Good. Good. Um, in, in an effort to try to observe some of the usual um, processes of using the liquid fuel, we did get the multiple quotes as a comparison. Yep. Um, but that portion of it will come out of general. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the plate compactor. Um, we got a quote from Plaster Equipment to purchase a used compactor for $8,900. Uh, rental rates generally are $230 per day or $700 a week or $1,890 per month. Uh, based on the number of projects that we have this year and we anticipate in coming years, I think it's a sound uh, decision to buy the plate compactor. Um, Irene, yeah, do you agree? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. Jim, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will make a motion to authorize the purchase of the plate compactor, the used plate compactor for $8,900 from plaster or equipment. Mm -hmm. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Okay, Irene. Wait, wait. Just a second. Me. Jim. Oh, okay. Irene was indicating aye. And Jim? Aye. Okay. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the Rikert Road Culvert Project. Uh, this is the materials that we will need to do that project. Uh, we will need 2A stone uh, totaling about 200 ton. We'll need 1B stone totaling 40 tons and 10 cubic yards of 5,000 PSI concrete. Uh, we did receive quotes from New Enterprise Stone and Lime for 2A stone. Uh, 23 tons delivered is $19.30 per ton. Uh, Pensy supply is twenty five fifty four per ton. Borrower's mm -hmm. quarry is eighteen ninety five a ton. Um, do we want to do this all at once, or do we want to do this piece by piece? Well, I have the motion separated down okay. below. Okay. If you want to read it. Okay, so I'll read everything off, and then we'll do it that way. 
Um, for one B stone, New Enterprise is 41.15 a ton. Pensy Supply is 25.54 a ton. Roars is 27.60 a ton. Concrete is Pensy Supply of uh, $2,095.30 with a fuel surcharge of $50 and an environmental fee of $15 for a total of $2,160.30. Boger Concrete and Anvil uh, gave us a, an estimate for a total price of $2,734. Uh, and New Enterprise, we got late. Okay, what, what is the New Enterprise it's worth? It's, I, it should be scanned. Okay, let me check. Let me back. look here. I was going to find that particular page. Oh, he, he just did it on the email, didn't he? Uh, it's $183 a yard. Yep, that's it. Yep. Okay, so. Okay, have, have a good rest of the night. Mm -hmm. Nice. So this this one also has like a bunch of. Do you see the page? Yeah, this this has a bunch of stuff about like the accelerator. Yeah, um, so there's there's going to be things that we have to add on to that. But as a rough figure, that's what one hundred eighty three dollars a cubic yard. We need ten cubic yards. So that's eighteen hundred dollars. One thousand eight hundred and thirty plus. Anything else? Um, honestly, New Enterprise looks like it's going to be the cheapest out of the, the three there. Um, so we'll go through the two, the motions one by one. For 2A, just as a reminder, we need 200 tons. Uh, the quote for New Enterprise, Stone and Lime, was 23 tons delivered at 1930 a ton. Pensy Supply was 2554. And Roar's Quarry was 1895 a ton. Um, I'll motion to uh, purchase the 200 tons from Rohrer's Quarry at $18.95 per ton. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. I, Irene indicates aye. And Jim? Aye. Thanks for carrying. Next, for the 1B stone, New Enterprise gave us a quote of $41.15 per ton, Pensy Supply of $25.54 per ton, and Roars of $27.60 per ton. Uh, I'll make a motion to purchase the 40 ton of 1B stone from Pensy Supply. Second. I'm setting that. Uh, for $25.54 per ton. Thank you. Jim, second? Yes. Okay. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Irene indicates aye. And Jim? Aye. Okay. And finally, the concrete. We will need 10 cubic yards. Uh, concrete, quote from Pensy Supply Concrete, is $2,095.30 with a fuel surcharge of $50 and an environmental fee of $15 for a total of $2,160.30. Boger Concrete in Anvil gave us a total price of $2,734.80. And New Enterprise gave us a quote for $183 per cubic yard. Uh, there's some additional things that we would need to have added, like certain accelerators, um, but they're still going to be the lowest cost on the list there at, at around uh, $1,900. So I'll make a motion to authorize. <coughs> purchase of the 10 cubic yards of 5,000 PSI concrete from New Enterprise. Second. Se second. Jim? Second. Uh, I think Irene was trying to trying to second on that one. <laughs> Give it <to> <laughs> on a roll call, Peter? Hi. Hi, Irene. And Jim. Hi. Okay. Next on the agenda is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Um, engineer Hess met with Butch and I and went through this. 
Um, I, believe, I saw your report in the packet there. It's, it seems like it's pretty much exactly in line with what we had talked about. So, yeah. Um, so, based on our field observation and actually the, uh, some investigation work done by the prior engineer, there is one pipe uh, under the alum there that was fall. And it is heading in the direction where we think we, if it's dead ends or it doesn't go anywhere or it's compromised beyond belief, then we would probably have to install a new pipe coming out to Main Street um, to pick up uh, that drainage. So I, I kind of concur with the previous engineer that it, it would make sense to televise and inspect that section of storm pipe. Um, so I had here uh, looking for board action on that. Once we know if that pipe is usable or where it goes or what have you, then um, either we, we augment that pipe with some additional inlets and so forth to help pick up some drainage. And I provided in your packet a, a, a watershed map um, because you know the, the, the problem area was, was some of the properties uh, along the east side of Marion Drive and the lack of any conveyance along Marion Drive, collection and conveyance, inlets and piping there. Um, there is, as we saw out there, an inlet out on Main Street at the corner that we could connect into. So if we do install a storm system there, I think um, the total area kind of draining there is surprisingly enough, you know, 4.8 acres. If we put in a system along Marion Drive with or without that existing pipe, we can substantially reduce that drainage area going to those backyards by just over 4.2 acres. So a significant improvement. Um, and, and putting that water into, into a storm pipe, which continues down Main Street, and Butch and I, uh, he pointed out to me where it's going, the outfall from that storm sewer pipe, because then that's my other concern. Even though this water ultimately gets there anyhow, some way, shape, or form, uh, but I'm always concerned with not pushing a drainage problem further downstream. Yeah. So Butch tells me that's one outfall that he does check on an annual basis, and uh, uh, the condition of it is has been holding up and it's not causing a problem downstream. So again, not to just throw money at this, I think it, it warrants investigating that existing pipe because if that came back online and depending where it goes, you know, that, that could also divert a lot of this water to roughly the same magnitude um, if that pipe is functioning and connected somewhere, but we just don't know. Um, I'm hopeful it connects to something. I kind of, I, I just, I don't, I don't understand why that would have been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because we don't see it out on Main Street, right? And there's nothing else along Marion Drive. So I don't, where is it going? I don't know where, anywhere else that it could possibly connect. I, exactly. So exactly. Um, and and that is the side of the road, by the way, that has um, the gas main. So if that pipe is in there, and if it's in good shape, we would let it in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe add another inlet or two just to improve the efficiency of picking up the drains from Marion Drive. Um, and avoid a lot of excavation in close proximity to that gas main. Okay. So, you know, I, I think right now just authorizing the township staff or Butch to, to get some uh, quotes from some local uh, inspection and cleaning companies. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Mr. Clog comes to mind, or Captain Clog comes to mind, or Mr. Rehab. There's a number of companies out there that can um, televise and clean that pipe out. Okay. Uh, to see if it's uh, worth salvaging and, and you continuing to utilize. Okay. Um, I don't know that we formally need a motion to have Butch get quotes, but I'll make one anyway. I'll motion to authorize the Roadmaster to get quotes for scoping or televising uh, the pipe, the storm sewer pipe uh, on Marion Drive near Main Street and 422, and then to get us quotes for uh, cleaning it out if it is obstructed. Second. Jim seconded it. Yeah, Jim, Jim, seconded, Jim seconded it. it. And Irene 
Oh, uh, well, no, she's, she's okay with it. We got to do roll call. call. So roll call, I'll, Peter. I'll, aye. Irene. And Jim. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Uh, next is the William Penn Boulevard culvert. Um, engineer Hess had received an email from Todd Geltmacher at Red Barn about a large concrete stormwater pipe that goes under William Penn Boulevard and discharges onto Roy Zartman's property. It appears the pipe is in disrepair. Uh, we did see some pictures and email that we were sent over. Um, engineer Hess will determine, or has hopefully maybe determined, how deep our right-of-way is in that area and if the unconnected U-joint on that is the right-of-way of the township or if it's on the property of owner's land. Yeah, I did not do any follow-up investigation on that. I mean, it, it really went quiet after I responded saying, you know, give us, ask, I actually asked the individual that sent the email from Red Barn to give us more information on that. Because apparently they're working on a subdivision plan for that property, which brought this issue to light. Um, because certainly if it's outside of the right-of-way, then I, I, in my opinion, the, the township has no obligation to uh, repair, now they may decide to, you know, participate in the repair or make a repair, I don't know, but if, if that property owner is doing some development work there um, and it's on his property, then I think it's his obligation to, to address it. So again, it went totally quiet after I responded uh, asking for additional uh, information. So in my opinion, unless you want to keep it on here as a reminder, it could probably come off your agenda until we hear yeah. something further. Okay. Um, Irene asked in the chat, uh, who pays the bill for the inquiry? Um, we had mentioned this at the workshop. So when somebody asks about that. Well, it's like, it's like any other drainage complaint or problem, something that comes in. Um, you know, I don't spend a lot of time on it, but, you know, time is time. So um, I, tip, I have been putting that under a specific job number for the township related to general stormwater issues. Okay. So that's how I've been doing that. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to bring that up um, for consideration on, on another matter. How do we track some of these things and control costs? And yeah. Okay. We'll see if Irene says anything back. But um, I, uh, I, I personally think the the opening gambit of something like that is just that's within our auspices. Of somebody asks a question, we have to validate. Correct. Yeah. We, you know, there has to be some that's mm -hmm. limited investigation. Yeah. You know? um, unless it's something very severe or something that's creating a hazard, what have you. I mean, I've dropped the farm come right out. But um, from what I looked at, based on that that email inquiry about this, it's pretty easy to say, hey, well, where's this exactly at? And by the way, if it's outside of the right of way, we think it's yours. Yeah. And then we're here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so you're taking that off of the agenda for future? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, Cohen Law Group will be scheduling a 30-minute call with Irene in the near future. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat to see if you say anything. Otherwise, I'll take your nodding head as acknowledgement. Uh, she'll be in the office next week. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Section 403 Amendment. This is about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, we have not been notified when the Western Berks Joint Zoning Planning Commission meeting will be scheduled for, but keep an eye appealed for that, and then hopefully that'll be on the agenda. Uh, next is the building and property renovations. Uh, we had a specialty contractor out, the Whitmer Group from Mount Joy, on January 17th to evaluate the brick wall above the garage that is going out. Uh, we have received a report, and it's... Uh, Fairly substantial. Um, the overall quote was around sixty-eight thousand dollars, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the engineer's recommendation, we should really put about thirty-five percent more into that quote based on just. Well, and I just had an update from the solicitor. Okay. About, um, I think he would support that this project would not be subject to prevailing wage rates. Okay, so that's good. The costs in the proposal from the Whitmer group would be would stand. Would stand. Okay. Um, and so I met out here with him to show him the issue. Um, there's certainly it needs some attention. Okay. Um, 
and not knowing the township's plans for this building, I asked him to look at it in two approaches. You know, one was uh, doing some work to stabilize it, tie the wall, the brick wall back into the structure with some specialty anchors um, and do some limited uh, you know, repointing uh, of the brick and so forth. And then again, to have a contingency, a full repair and restoration of the entire wall. So that's why you have two numbers before you. Now, the option that could also be looked at is, you know, some of the components of the structure, uh, the way the brick wall was tied into the, the wooden frame structure, um, aren't real evident until we do a little removal of some facade boards and removal of maybe some flooring boards so we can get a better uh, indication of exactly what's going on. And, and, and with that information, it could go either way. We could have more costs or maybe we'd have less costs because we see it, it's not going to take as much as we're anticipating. Um, so one other option other than the, the, you know accepting the, the two quotes that were given would be to um, engage the Whitmer group to come out and remove some of that, do a little more exploratory work. Uh, I did not ask him for a cost for that, but you know we could we could set some threshold that you'd be comfortable with. But of course, with the advertising requirements or having that on the agenda in advance, I don't know that we could do that here tonight. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to amend the agenda, which Correct. is functionally doable. I'm sorry. So. Um, <laughs> um, just per statement, the, the quoted cost in there for the temporary bracing also included the prevailing wage amount, which if you adjust off the 35%, it's about 22,000. So the, the Band-Aid is 22 grand. Uh, the Band-Aid as it was in the proposal at 24,970. Thank you. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, that, that would cover you if you were inclined to do that now. You know, because part of the work they would, they even indicated, you know, they would remove some of that wood trim around the doors and stuff, and we would look at that. So that would, that would more quickly get something done to stabilize that wall because well, I don't think it's an imminent mode of failure. You never know. So the, the one thing that I will say is I know we want to move on looking at a new building and this this is just a further motivating factor um we have to be cognizant of if it's going to fall down and knowing that it's going to take us time to get property break ground permitting all that fun stuff actually constructs before we can do anything else um, the other thing that immediately jumps into mind is that was called out on our, our insurance the guy right. pointed that out okay. so I don't know that we're going to be able to necessarily kick this along for a long enough amount of time to be able to, to I'll, I'll put it bluntly, cut bait and run on it um, because we're going to have to do something with it, whether it starts to degrade or we're, we're at risk of the insurance dropping us. So um, at this point, I'm not a big fan of spending money on that. I think it's good money after bad, but I think we're at bare minimum going to have to, to band do the, the band aid route. Jim, I know I can I can see you I chewing on to, your. I hate to spend any money on this building. Duct tape it. And yeah, un, you know, it. unfortunately, the duct tape is the twenty four thousand yeah, dollars. <laughs> the, the the issue becomes a, a couple fold. How quickly are you going to move on the new building, and what's the ultimate decision for this building? If there's value in this building and we think about selling this building and the property, then it would make sense to stabilize it with the repair. I tend to agree with you too. I wouldn't want to put the money in if the ultimate decision is to perhaps demolish this building and maybe reuse the property. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm still personally of the opinion that we should try to find, I know land is difficult, but try to find something, anything. We talked to Richard Hassler about his property next door. Or we can find some other bit. Um, the good news on that, and I'll fast forward to two items uh, ahead, is the request to dissolve the covenant on the deed 
was accepted mm -hmm. by the Conrad Weiser School District. So they they have agreed to give us a, a fee simple fee, yep. Yep. Um, and basically absolve us of any of the the restrictions. So that's that's a, a huge it is huge, huge thing, um, and that opens up the doors for us to be able to do things like subdivide the property, keep the playground, and yep. sell off the building. Yep. Um, so we we don't have to find as big of a parcel of land because then we only have to worry about putting the municipal building and truck station there and the salt shed and you know that that sort of stuff. So we're a lot more agile and a lot more options are open to us because we're looking at a smaller piece of property overall. Um, but again, like I said before, it's going to take us time to find that. It's going to take us time to buy it. It's going to take us time to get the permits. It's going to take us time to start construction. And two during, two yeah, yep. it's, it's going to be a considerable amount of time. And during that time, we still have the, we still have the responsibility of keeping the municipal services available. We have to have the office open and available. We have to have meetings. Um, and I don't know that we really have a space unless we're going to try and rent something somewhere or, or put up a, a trailer as a temporary thing, which again has costs associated with that. Um, we're not going to be able to check all the boxes that we need to as, the, as much as it pains me to say that the other thing too i think it's good timing good work on your part that the school district's willing to unencumber this property because now you have perhaps the value in this building um that could be you know sold and the proceeds used for the new building but obviously you need to have a wall on one end of the building to have, have that to do value. that yeah so you know maybe that's lending itself more towards uh, the sale of this building and not the demolition and reuse of this property yeah. i personally i'd like to see the building stay it's a while it's not a historical like registered landmark necessarily it has a lot of significance in the community because it's been uh, a landmark for eons um so I think our best course of action, and I know Jim, you're you're making faces over there. You don't want to spend <laughs> don't want to spend the money. Huh? Irene, is I, Irene is um, He's on the I'm, I don't see the significance to this bill. No. Yes, I didn't go to school here. I don't know why anybody would be attached to a place that was built in 1877, the back end and the front end of this building in 1931. I don't understand why anybody is attached to this building. Look in the corner. I mean, it's falling down. This end's going to fall down next. If anybody wants to buy this building, let them buy it the way it is now. If we have to rent a place, we talked about building a garage across here. Take the 22000 and put it into that garage. That's a thought. I mean, it's... I so, don't see putting money into this building. So I honestly I, think we ought to tear it down. And this is where the new building should go because you're not going to get another piece of property. I, I think we might get run out of town with torches and pitchforks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I'll get. I, I can tell you, I went to school here. Town. I'm sentimentally attached to this building, but yet from working here, this is the most inefficient building ever. Yes. Our last built gas bill mm -hmm. was $918. You're, and you're, we don't even have the, temp, the thermostat to Wait yeah, till you get this one. I, I know. I'm saying yeah. this for the uh, yeah. I'm saying this for public record. I'm saying it's like you're public. you're preaching to the converted. So, how much money do we put into this to, to even just renovate it to to make it habitable? Well, not not even renovating, but just just to remediate any of the outstanding problems: the windows, the brick pointing, the fact that we don't have any heat upstairs. I mean, all of there's those. There's more tiles falling down up there. Well, I don't it's, see anybody I'm, buying this building. I don't. I honestly think we have to give it. We won't, That's how bad it is. We won't know until we try. Um, but I think our, our our best next step, and I'll I'll defer to Chuck for a second for his his point of view. Take the equipment thought. out of the building. Put tape across it. Put police tape across it, and hope that it doesn't fall down. So, and if it does fall down. Chuck, you're obviously not the insurance guy, but with I, generally with that sort of thing, do you think we'd have enough time that we could tread water for a month while we look into a temporary space? Jim's, Jim's point is valid. If rather than spending 22,000 on remediating the wall, we could potentially put up a temporary office somewhere else 
And then Irene suggested it. The insurance company didn't give us a time. I know. I don't want to. I don't want to well, push that too much. Put on notice by the insurance. Company. Yeah. So if something does happen, does yeah. that give them any means of Specific. saying you didn't address it? You were you were notified. You, mm -hmm. you were put on notice. We're not going to cover any claim. So I was just looking through here and thinking. You know, I think the approach, and this is this is a pretty intensive work here, but. They did have in some repointing, um, you know, the exterior even as part of um, that temporary uh, bracing, um, and maybe that's uh, something we could save some money on if we didn't do. We put the structural tiebacks back in, uh, which would stabilize the wall. The repointing really is going to help keep uh, further moisture penetration and what have you. From attacking and deteriorating the wall, especially on that northwest side, because that's where our prevailing winds are coming from. Mm -hmm. So, while I can't say exactly how much removing that pointing, repointing work would be for a pretty small area, um, but it, that's pretty labor intensive because they have to, you know, remove any soft weak mm -hmm. mortar that's in there and then repoint it. Um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to see is there some can we level do something of, without doing the whole thing? Of cost that you would be comfortable with. Yeah. And then I could go back to the contractor and say, uh, because, you know, when we looked at this, we were going to put um, the tiebacks in at two different levels. I think the worst part of it is, is really down towards just above the garage doors. Um, you can we, can we, brick off. You're going to find your post yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Keep in mind, bidding threshold is just twenty two five. Yeah. I know firsthand how rotted that is up yeah, there. The wood, it. the it wood almost went through. But since Sue's point, I would not be envisioning the second class township code that says repairs to public facilities are not are not part of the Oh, good. Okay. Good. Wonderful. Good. Yeah, that's why we pulled that. Pull yeah. So, but so, I, I, and I would also know. I didn't see in the report that the Whitmer group concluded that the wall was in imminent danger of collapse. Well, I don't think it, they reached and, that. And I would agree. Conclusion. I don't think it's in, in imminent danger, but there's so many things that we can't see. This is all based on a visual right. observation. So until we pulled some of that facade off and so forth uh, to really get a better sense, but I hear what you're saying. When we do get to see what's in there, you can open a can of worms at the whole package. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. if I've learned anything in the brief time of being a homeowner is the second you start any project, you're going to find six things at every step that you didn't know about that need to be done until. It's, it's come to push has now come to show. We either have to make a decision to find another piece of property yeah. Tear this building down and build it. I think we need to aggressively look at other other pieces of property. And Irene put in Irene put in the chat that this exact situation more or less has happened to other townships and accommodations can be made at other locations. We could look at having meetings at the, the school potentially, or uh, Brandon Sweeney suggested in the chat of talking to the fire company to see if we could use the, the hall over there. Um, we can make uh, provisions about uh, renting a, a trailer like they do at construction sites for the office space. Um, which would free us up to be able it's, to do other. It just, I don't know that it's you not would, just having space to work. It's, it's space for storage. Moving all those stuff yeah. that's up there. Well, I know. So, yeah. But and, and I'd, I I'd rather do that than spend gobs of money on the wall. I don't think you would have to move out as well. The issue would be because of the garage that's there and the garage doors, and you're moving in and out of there with equipment or whatever. You would want to move all that out and then probably put some bracing up on the wall. And that would help to stabilize it. And then I think you could continue to occupy this portion of the building. My thought was around the insurance. We're only going to be able to tread water for so long on the insurance that if we actually set up a temporary space that our meetings elsewhere, we could potentially sell the building while we look for, for other land. That would be another. That we could function plan. off of, like, for example, the a trailer on the side of the playground or something like that where it's not overly obtrusive 
Um, is anybody going to buy the building and say no? If that's you're optimistic that somebody is yeah. interested in this building, yeah, we disclose that that's. But yeah, yeah, we we in, in sold as is, in, in as good as ethics, as it should be sold as yeah. is and disclose. Yeah. The the wall should disclose yeah. the tanks in the ground. Like any, we need to be upfront about this, and obviously we we don't want to deal with the problem, but we also don't want to just like voice it off onto somebody else that doesn't know any better. Put it on tomorrow and see how many people respond to it. <laughs> and if you get three, I'll be stunned. Because okay. I don't think you're going to get anybody that's going to want to buy this. Place. It, this it, don't. it might be interesting it's, also to get an appraiser, but I don't know if you want to spend the money. Yeah, yeah right. so I don't know if it's See, worth getting an appraiser. You know, you know a, real, a good real estate agent that deals with something like this might, yeah. might be able to help you value. The, the billing yeah. should short for ridiculous. Oh, really? Yeah. It's good. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I think it's, it's insured for $1.7 million. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 either, it's something like that. Yeah. Which, Well, so we can we can get a quote. It's very easy to get a quote, but there's there's two halves to this. I recognize the sentimentality of it, and I, I like the sentimentality of it. The other half of it is this building is so old that there's asbestos all over the place. There's more than likely lead paint. If we start excavating, we have to deal with the tank, the buried tanks out there. And if we find contamination, that is a whole mess. That is a hornet's nest I do not want to kick. Um, so there's a, there's, there's a lot of things, much like when you open the wall up, that if you, you pull that, that thread, six more things are going to start to unravel too. And it's, it's something that we may not be able to, or we may not be prepared for from a cost standpoint. It wouldn't lead you to believe that anybody else is going to want to buy well, building all well, those things. So the, the one thing I will say is the wall is obviously an imminent problem, but the tanks, as long as you're not disturbing them, generally it's a, a problem that you can let lie. Unless somebody plans on digging them out or something like that, that's only when it becomes an issue. Um, yeah, I feel yeah, and that's it's is if you if you don't look, it doesn't become a problem. It's it's Schrodinger's tank out there for the time being. So and there's fuel in that tank. No, it's been empty for, no. for ages. But <laughs> the problem with that though is if we dig it out and we found that it was leaking or had been leaking at some time, then we're in a, a world of hurt. It's been in there quite a few yeah. years. You know, in addition to, to testing the market, if you will, for what value might be here or if a realtor would say yeah this is a gem and a diamond in the rough whatever mm -hmm. the other one would be um you know what kind of salvage value would a demolition contractor see because there are some really neat old parts of this building that the salvage value might yeah so I, irene actually good. just put that in there that there's oh, probably okay. salvage value in this yeah um she also suggests that we we try m night Shyamalan. Um, but, uh, I, I'd like to see us repurpose some of the stuff at a new location too, like the yeah. woodwork, right. um, the, the bell you know, up yeah, there, yeah. The, the light fixtures, you know, things that preserve the some character of it. But... Let's contact somebody tomorrow. So tearing the building down, let's get a quote or push it. And let's contact a realtor to find out what yeah. they think the building I, can be sold for. I, I, I Jim, all the time I, in the world. I'm friends with a realtor. I'll give her a call tomorrow and see if she can give us... Is there? What? Tim Himmelberger. He doesn't live in Marion Township. Yeah, he used to. I don't know that I contacted him. But yeah, like I said, I, uh, I'm friends with somebody who's a realtor. So if, if nothing else, she can come out and give us a, an honest opinion yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is sort of, and I think you're right. You know, within this limited area, you might not have a lot of interest. But if it were marketed to a broader area, yeah, you know, somebody that had the wherewithal and really, you know, was interested in an historic building and turning it into something mm -hmm. and had the wherewithal might. Well, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's over a hundred years old. It's some history. It's yeah. old. It's just not on a historical re like register. Correct. So, and that's fortunate. That's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't so, want to be encumbered by that. Yeah. So I, I think personally, my, my stance on this is let's get a quote. No, there's no harm in getting a quote for what it would cost to demolish. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot higher than we would anticipate because of all the, the little 
lingering things like the tank, the asbestos, the fact that it's lead paint, just the overall size of the building to, to safely demolish this is going to be a, a fairly sizable task. Um, that we're, we're going to have some some costs there that we may not be anticipating. And then on the flip side of that, talk to a real estate agent and yeah. they may say you're not going to get anything for it. Or they may say, hey, if you have it on the market for a while, the market's hot, you may be able to get whatever amount for it. So really, we need we need the information to move forward. But I think we've talked about it before. We've kicked it around. We've batted this here and there. We're at a turning point. You said put yourself, push comes to shove. Um, so I think we need to, to have those conversations with the outside parties. And then we also need to start aggressively looking at the grant opportunities that we had talked about before for it being a community center, for it being an evacuation space, for it, um, you know, X, Y, and Z going after every possible grant opportunity that we can. Uh, because when we looked at it, we figured if we, if we got the majority of them, it would be about 75% covered. And we have that 200,000 from the ARP pretty much pays for the building. So, um, I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll call the person that I know that's a real estate agent, see if I can't get her to come out and, and give me the, the, the lowdown on what her thoughts are. And then I don't even know where to, to start other than just Googling like demolition company and <laughs> having people come out and give me a quote. Um, you know, so I think, I think you could go another month. Okay. okay. Um, but I would advise keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. And certainly whenever I'm here, I'll take a look. And, it, it might be good to go upstairs where there have been some cracks developing and, and puts, mark some areas and mm -hmm. take some measurements and monitor that crack to make sure it doesn't grow. Okay. I think that's pretty Because, you know, just keep an eye on it at least, you know, once a week or something or heavy rain event, whatever, winds, that type of thing. Just keep an eye on it. And, you know, one other option would be, you know, this was the Whitmer. And they're mm -hmm. very reputable. They're, they know they do this type of historical renovation. Mm -hmm. I could approach another masonry contractor and see if we can get a little better quote, just to give you another option. I mean, I think at this point, I'll spend. I'll, I'll agree to ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say at this point, I don't know if there's going to be a dollar figure that is going to tip the scales more towards, um, I think Irene it's wandered not, off. It's just um, not worth it. No, Brandon Sweeney. Oh, it. okay. There's a good 14 to 1600 square foot where the tennis courts are, pop a metal pole building on it. Um, so we want to keep the tennis courts though. Otherwise that would be a, that would be a thought. Um, temporarily we could park a trailer over there or something like that. Like one of those the temporary office things. But the, the goal here is to preserve the, the playground space. Um, whether long-term that means keeping the tennis courts because nobody really uses them and turning that into something else or, or not, but that's that's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. So we even nets up them. I don't, nets. We don't even have nets, do we? No, they haven't had nets up. Yeah. No. Either way, I yeah, there's that's a whole other discussion for another day. Yeah. But um, Irene is back. So I think really our, our action items is. Um, I think we need to contact this guy. Yeah. Find out is he even remotely interested in selling this piece of that? If not. So, I mean, that would that'd be perfect because it's right next door to the playground. I have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So. It'd have to be subdivided. Oh, it'd have to be subdivided. If, I know. If, but, if the insurance company gives us any <laughs> trouble, you're going to have to take the equipment out of there and. I don't think they can do anything if we block it off. And it's like it's a, it's an issue. Well, I mean, it still presents a liability, even if the stuff's not in there. Like if, if your insurance company, like I would think, I'll defer to you since you're the insurance guy, but um, if your homeowner's insurance said your roof is, is bad and you need to fix your roof, otherwise we're not going to cover you. If you just well, basically said like, I'm putting point, cars I don't think they're going to cover us anyway, because they don't yeah. know it's a disaster. It's this is ready to fall over. This is true. Would they want to this is true. They, in fact, if they're willing to cover us, I'll go push it over right now. It won't take much to push that thing out. <laughs> so, uh, Irene, we're going to be doing some homework. Our action items are, so I'm going to talk to a, a friend of mine who's a real estate agent, and then we need to try to get a rough ballpark estimate from somebody about what demolishing the building would actually cost. Um, well, 
and, and, and I would I would phrase it as you know demolition with salvage value mm -hmm. because whoever comes in here is going to see value yeah. in a lot of the woodwork and what have you yeah. other things and even light fixtures and so forth can have a, a tremendous value to the right people oh, yeah. so it's all yeah. how you spin it um yeah I'm trying to think there was a demolition contractor I worked with in, in Lancaster but I don't yeah. know if they got there's into a, this type of there's a lot of um, life in Lancaster economy that plays yeah, the key is the key is finding one that just doesn't want to knock it down. Yeah. One that wants to do select demolition, pulling out, salvaging yeah. the good stuff, and yeah. then taking it down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a good thought, Sue. Because again, to reiterate, I don't want to have us go down that avenue, but whether we sell it or we demolish it, I do want to make sure that we take pieces with us so that we, we preserve yes. the, the character of yes. I just building. Googled it. There's three yeah. that come right up. Okay. Uh, Empire. Empire is one of them. Eshelman, Jericho. Okay. Plus probably sounds, many, many more. Sounds like expand your reach a little bit. Hoover. Again, I think finding yeah. one that specializes in historical salvage and demolition. Because they're going to see the value in each. Yeah. So we'll, we'll make some calls and we'll have that for the workshop meeting then. Okay. Okay, next is the property deed. I mentioned that earlier, but uh, we had made a request to the Conrad Weiser School District. Uh, the Conrad Weiser Superintendent and the Director of Facilities were here on the 17th to evaluate the property. Um, I gave them a, a tour and kind of an explanation of the situation we're in. They had this on their meeting agenda for the uh, school board meeting that happened uh, the prior Wednesday night. Um, we have received a letter from their solicitor, uh, solicitor indicating the school board is agreeable to the township's proposal and would like a contract and new deed for the school board's consideration at their meeting. Um, I assume we just need a motion to authorize the, the solicitor to draft the, uh, the contract and the new deed. Yep. So I'll make a motion to authorize Kozlov Stout to draft the new contract and new deed in alignment with the school board's consideration of our request to dissolve the pre-existing covenant. Second. Our roll call, Peter? Aye. Marie? Aye. And Jim? Aye. Motion carried. Mr. Chairman, just to back up on the proposed new building, um, so maybe that's becoming a little more of a priority uh, now. Yes. Um, it, it, you know, I've, provided a really rough floor plan yeah. to look at. Um, it, it might be beneficial to, Sorry, and, I, and we can talk, you know, after the meeting, but perhaps uh, engage in an architect, come in here, get a sense of this building and its character and history, mm -hmm. and work on refining that floor plan to incorporate some aspects of this building here um, and start to push that project a little more more emphasis now that we know there's yeah. an issue here um i just you know time ticks by month by month mm. and i would think you know to you go through planning land acquisition what have you you know it could be a two-year period so you know in the interim what do you do? And there's probably an architect out there that's already built one that's very similar to what we're looking for. Well, and I, I yeah. can share with nice. you some I just came from another meeting. Yeah. Um, uh, not quite the scale that you're looking at because of the, the community aspects and the, and the evacuation things, but uh, nonetheless, I think, you know, it might be time to start yeah. pushing that effort a little. Do they, do they have an the architect? When I was on council in Western Pennsylvania, we built a new building at one point. And when the architect sent it over, it had the wrong name. name the previous it. job. Yeah, it was a previous job. We were building the same building. So well, that, that's that probably what's going to happen. But yeah. I think, you know, if you have a reputable architect to help with that, yeah. You know, the, it's it's your building. Oh, yeah, your we need building an architect. They'll anyway. make it. They'll make yeah. it. We're going to need one, but yeah. he may already have something to say. Hey, look, if we just built this, mm -hmm. will this be adequate? 
Yeah, they may have something really close yeah. to your point. We'll say, yeah. yeah. So can Chuck, you change this? Yeah, okay. Fine. Chuck, if you have somebody that you've been working with, can you get the contact that information over sure. to Sue so we can call sure. them? Okay. I'd be happy to. Okay. okay. Next is the 2023 fee schedule for professional services. Uh, we received this from Systems Design Engineering, Craft Municipal Group, Kozlov Stout, and attorney Keith Mooney. Merchant Biotech will keep the same fees as 2022. Um, we will need to adopt these fees uh, via resolution 2023-2. Uh, I'll make a motion to adopt these fees. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Irene indicates aye. And Jim? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Next is the CoStars SALT contract renewal. The enrollment deadline is March 15th, 2023 for the 2023-2024 season. Last year, we renewed for 150 tons. We need to take a minimum of 60% and a maximum, or, or a maximum of 140%. Minimum is 90 ton, maximum is 210. Uh, 200 ton would be uh, 120 ton max minimum and 280 ton maximum. So much like we talked about on Saturday, we should pin this until next month's Board of Supervisors meeting in case we have snow. Because uh, as it stands right now, our salt shed is Fairly full, and we have not taken a single thing. delivery. I just so ordered two loads. You but... ordered two loads? Okay. So we have a lot more loads that we mm -hmm. have would have to take, and we don't have the room for it. So um, that's going to influence our decision making. But I'm overall fairly comfortable with the 150 mark because that's a, a pretty good low amount, a pretty good high amount based on an average year. So we'll talk more about that next month. But with any luck, we won't have too much snow maybe just enough to use a little bit of the salts uh, and then we won't have to, to sweet talk our friends in Tulpa Hawken Township about holding some of our salt again. Okay, next is the anti-skid. Uh, we received quotes from New Enterprise Stone and Lime for $23.75 per ton delivered. Pensy Supply of $21.34 per ton delivered and Roar's Quarry for $27.65 per ton delivered. Um, we have a pretty decent amount of anti-skid right now, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to authorize a certain amount uh, to be purchased by the Roadmaster as needed. Um, which rough ballpark, how many tons do you think for anti-skid that you'd need between now and once the snow season stops? Because I know we have a, a bit out there, thinking like uh, three tons, four tons. Don't want to keep, we don't want to keep so much on hand. Yeah, so we want to be spend that money. Yeah. yeah. Around 40 tons. Okay. And he doesn't have to buy them all at once either. That's the no. so, yeah, that, that's what I mean. So yeah. and they and they yeah. um the the anti-skid if i call one day within the next day or two we'll have it okay where the salt is a different story but so i'll make a motion to authorize the purchase as needed of up to 40 tons from uh pensy supply for anti-skid second mm. Do you want to roll call? The honor roll, roll call. Uh, Peter? Aye. Irene? Irene aye. indicates aye. And Jim? Aye. Okay, next is the pension plan contribution. The secretary worked the required thousand hours during 2022. Contribution rate is 15% of the gross salary, uh, the $33,003.50. Calculated contribution amount is $4,950.53. Motion was made at the workshop to authorize this contribution. Next item is the vacancy chair resignation. Nancy Carrington moved out of the township and sent us a letter of resignation. Um, we did appoint Kelly Cox at the reorganizational meeting for the vacancy chair. Um, however, it's just in good practice to, uh, with regret, accept a letter of resignation. And we made a motion reflecting such at the workshop. Uh, the secretary will send a letter to her acknowledging this. Okay, next is the Certificate of Commendation. 
Um, we had a, a situation where one of the residents of Talpy View uh, had a, a medical episode while they were taking their trash out. Uh, Jorge Gonzalez, who was the trash truck driver for Eagle Disposal, um, without hesitation, dropped everything that he was doing and helped the resident get into their house and called 911, uh, along with some of the other residents uh, and neighbors of that person in Tulpe View. Um, we talked about this on Saturday and made a, a motion to send a certificate of commendation to Mr. Gonzalez and to the two other neighbors that helped, Mr. Jonathan Kurland and Mr. Robert Schleibeis. Schleibeis? Um, Slavice. Slavice, thank you. Um, so we have a nice little letter of commendation. I believe we're, we're all going to sign it and send that out. Um, it's seldom that you, you have something like this happen. And it's, it's very nice to know that there are people uh, that we have in the community that will drop everything that they're doing and go out of their way to help someone when in need. So um, special thank you to uh, the driver from Eagle. Uh, Mr. Jorge Gonzalez, Mr. Jonathan Kurland, and Mr. Robert Schleibeis. Okay. Next item is the Mervyn and Mabel Weiler letter of credit. This is number D005159. Uh, this is for Weiler's Garage. The letter of credit has been auto increased from $45,119.96 to $49,631.96. Next item on the agenda is the Henry and Jane Steiner property uh, for Ag Security. Um, this is the Lebanon County Conservation District. Uh, they'd like a letter from us saying it's okay to put the entire parcel into Mill Creek Township's Ag Security. Um, for where we ended up with that on Saturday, we actually need to send them a letter or is mm -hmm. it just an acknowledgement? No, okay. they won the letter. Okay. Um, is this something that we can just write or is this something that we need to I have the solicitor? Oh, you already written? Okay. To sign it. Okay, yeah. so uh, I'll make- I, I, I passed it by Andy and he said it's fine. Okay, so I'll make a motion to authorize the, the letter prepared by Sue, secretary, to be sent uh, regarding the approval of the uh, Mill Creek Town Ag Security for Henry and Jane Steiner's property. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Irene indicates aye. And Jim? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, I'll sign them before I leave. Uh, next is, and finally is the office closure. Uh, we neglected to motion on this at the reorganizational meeting, but the office will be closed May 16th, 2023 for the primary and November 7th, 2023 uh, for general election. We made a motion at the workshop to close the office on those dates and pay the secretary. Secretaries, I should say. There's two of you now. Um, the Last thing is the comments. Um, I don't have any comments. The only thing, actually, I, I, I take that back. I do have a comment. Um, Sue. You want to review the police report? I, I will. Okay. I'll do that next. Um, Sue clued me into this. The uh, Berks County Conservation District is doing a free tire collection on April 6th, 2023 from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. There's a limit of 25 car or truck tires per appointment. Uh, and you do need to make an appointment. Uh, you can contact the info at berkscd.com uh, to set an appointment time. Um, they will not be accepting tractor, farm, or heavy-duty tires. So if you have any tires that need to be disposed of, uh, this is a good good outlet for those. Um, didn't we used to do it? We, we did, um, but that was... Uh, fairly costly thing. And even though we said like no tractor and farm and heavy duty tires, we got a lot of those. And I did that a couple of years with the other Peter. It was a real bear. <laughs> all those tires in the back of that trailer. I um, there were companies that We, we uh, paid no, over a thousand dollars. Yeah. Now yeah. they're, old. yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> unfortunately that would be nice. The, the one thing that they, you, you can still get money for, and it's oftentimes donated to the community association is car batteries and farm equipment batteries and things like that, because they get, I think, $10 a battery for recycling. Blend. So that's still something that if, if anybody just as a, an open statement has uh, batteries, car batteries that need to be recycled, you can donate them to the community association and uh, they get a little money towards a good cause. Uh, but otherwise, the tires, unfortunately, are a relatively high cost item for recycling. Um, and then last but not least is the police report. It was a really quiet month. There's barely any activity on here other than the, the usual routine 
uh, patrolling and security checks and things like that. Um, otherwise, they had no parking tickets, no traffic accidents, no DUIs, no traffic warnings. Um, seems like people were behaving themselves in, in December. Um, they had other things to do, I guess. Um, Irene, I know it's going to be difficult for you to make comments based on your current situation, but do you have anything that you want to put in the chat as a comment? No. Okay, Irene is shaking her head. No. Jim, do you have any comments? No. Okay. Chuck, any comments? Um, from my engineer's report, just again, looking for a little direction. Um, on page one, uh, A1A, Craft Codes contacted me about uh, a project uh, that involved, I think it was the extension of a roof, about 170 square feet. And uh, I indicated to him that while the, the township stormwater ordinance really does not indicate any threshold for when you have to do a stormwater, it just requires stormwater. I personally would like to have some sort of policy that small projects like that, and I'm su suggesting a threshold of around 500 square feet. That if something's less than that, they do not have to address storm. And to further that, I think the first meeting I attended here, I had presented um, perhaps a policy for um, small projects that would be over 500 square feet and how a homeowner could fill out an application and provide, basically it's an infiltration trench, you know, for uh, something over 500 square feet of size. And, and so you're doing something to address stormwater that you don't impact downstream property owners. Okay. Um, that, we never really came back to that. Um, okay. And I guess I would, I would want to have the discussion with the solicitor on how that could be adopted as a policy to some degree. Um, so those two things, just something to, I was looking for some direction. Okay, so my, my question, because I, I think it's a, a lovely idea. Um, the things that are over 500 square feet, so case in point, if you have somebody put a carport in, that's 32 by 16. Those are just the numbers that I threw together. That's 512 square feet. That would just be just over that threshold. Are we proposing that they go through the full stormwater management process or kind of a stormwater management process no. light? So, so as that? you know, you just adopted an ordinance at the end of last year. Yeah that adjusted your exemption criteria. Mm -hmm. I hate that term exemption because it does not exempt you from doing stormwater. Mm -hmm. It exempts from any rate control facilities. Okay. There's still three criteria you have to meet, which is uh, groundwater recharge, um, uh, water quality, and stream bank erosion. And again, that's all kind of addressed by the small projects Okay. approach here. Okay. If you infiltrate, you inherently address all three of those criteria. Um, so if it's over, if it's 512, I would ask, is there some area on the property that you could remove some existing impervious cover or consider something that's semi-impervious, what have you? Mm -hmm. um, again, trying to be practical, but still trying to address things of significance that could ultimately cumulatively have impacts. Um, but I think you have to be practical for some of these things, especially, you know, that one that called, you know, the call was on 170 square feet and, and his email was even, hey, I know how the previous engineer looked at things and, and ran by. So, you know, I, I put an email, I said, you know, I don't think we need to go to that level, but I would like to have the board's support of that policy. Yeah, because like I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think it's uh, good to set the criteria so that it's it's very clear cut, mm -hmm. removes any ambiguity. Um, but again, it's the reason I picked those numbers is it's just above that. Um, <laughs> so if we had something, I, I wouldn't think we'd have to put somebody through the, the same rigor that we would for a huge, like if somebody's building a, a house or building a, a large right. pole barn Driveways or, you know, or yeah. yeah, that sort of thing wouldn't necessarily have the same involvement uh, as a, like I said, a carport, just yes. something that's considered impervious cover, but just happens to be above that 500 mark. But like we had recently, there was the pool that was going in. Mm -hmm. And so that met the exemption criteria. And then they address the, the other three criteria with a little infiltration trench, which I think is appropriate. Yeah. Um, so for something like you're talking about, if it meets the exemption criteria, they could simply follow the small projects mm -hmm. and basically be doing something 
to address they need rest of it. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's talk about it. Um, Should we it's, put stormwater on? Next yeah, time? I was gonna say put that on the, the agenda for the next time. And if uh, if you want to be here the, the workshop meeting, or if you can just send us like your notes yeah. in the packet. Yep. Um, I don't want to belabor the point because yep. it's already yep. uh, nine fifteen and, tonight. And I tell you what I would do too in the meantime, and just to get the solicitor on board, you know, send him the same packet, yep. and just so he's prepared to how. Either this is a policy or if it needs to be something else a little more true. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, the other item uh, I had. So of course, Stonecroft Village was here tonight. Mm -hmm. And I also had a drainage uh, complaint um, for Stonecroft with the infield that was filling up with, with uh, drainage. Uh, I guess I'm... <laughs> I think what I need to do is pull like a, a job number to track time and cost spent on Stonecroft Village because I'm hopeful you still have some escrow money that the developer would be paying for, for anything related to that developer. Escrow. So yeah, we'd have to don't check. I'd have, no. I'd have to look at quick books or you'd have to look If you books. don't have escrow, I think you could be requesting they replenish it. I, don't, uh, I would say we don't, I, I don't know that for a fact. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't recall seeing an escrow okay. account with a balance in it. So we don't, we don't. Okay. Oh, we don't. So any any costs the township incurs in the future in dealing with that development can can those costs could go back yeah. to the developer? Uh, developer just reimbursed. Two minutes here. Walk away from me. What are you going on? Yeah, from who was back? That was right. back stuff. Because right. I think the way that that um, I'd have to check with Irene, but I think the way that that agreement is written is they're responsible for all costs. So oh, it should be. So should be. Conceivably, we could that's send correct, them correct. a bill saying right, and that's why I think I need to start yeah. tracking that. Yeah, I, I because agree. there's just too many things that are continually coming up, mm -hmm. um, and so that would you know deal with some of these things, and maybe now this whole dedication issue, and I also have this um, you know the testing requirements mm -hmm. for the dry well, and moving forward, you know. Eventually, add for drawings and, and release a letter of credit, what have you. So, I, I, I want to start tracking that for you folks because I think you can recoup it from the developer. Okay. Is yeah, please, it? please do. I think All that's right. prudent. Uh, and then I think that was it. Yeah, I think that covers um, the stone crop I actually had in two places. Um, one was with regard to the um, the uh, offer of dedication that we heard about tonight, because again, I, I received uh, those exhibits and, and felt it was necessary to take a quick look at that. And then also there was the drainage um, complaint that came in. Um, so again, I, I think anything related to Stonecroft Village, the township should be recouping the costs and, and helping the Homeowners Association um, and dealing with the, the various developer issues that seem to be coming to light. And, and hopefully it's coming to an end here mm. soon, you know, the last yeah. couple of things. And... I think it certainly is coming to a head, but yeah. with that said, there's going to be a flurry of activity as they try to close things out. Right. So. Yeah. That's it. You said you did look at this storm source. Um, I think it was a month or two ago, the gentleman came in here, had some pictures, yes. and yeah. they were of the inlet boxes, the catch basins in the road, and there's uh, great adjustment rings or bricks that are put in there. And the pictures he had is very typical. There's bricks from water pressure outside the, the box under the pavement if the groundwater's there. And then especially if you have sediment of the pavement right against the concrete box, Water gets down in there, it starts putting pressure on those bricks, it starts pushing them in and it dislodges. And typically, it's a result because when they were installed, water was put around the bricks after they were adjusted. So there needs to be a weep hole there to allow that water pressure into the box versus so pushing on the bricks. Is that something that Stonecroft should repair? <clears throat> I would say it would be something I would which should be brought to the attention of landmark, uh, especially if they're pursuing uh, this whole dedication of not only the open space lots but eventually the roads. But I would advise you to, to look at the you know the, the declaration uh, for the homeowner association, see how that dedication process is there, and I would hope 
but I don't know that there would be provisions that um, you know the HOA basically signs off or accepts dedication once everything's in a condition that you're satisfied with. That being said, if the township still has financial security for that, when they come to ask for uh, a request for uh, a reduction or just the release of that, then that's going to prompt me to go out and do a final inspection of what they're asking for, for what money is still held. And certainly from what I'm hearing, I'm going to involve the HOA or representatives from the HOA. And we will identify and list things. Um, I, I know I can guarantee you as a classic developer, they're going to push back on all of those things. But certain things are going to be important um, structurally and a safety aspect. Uh, those inlets that might be part of it. They just want to make sure that they don't skip leave town there before they yes. before they. And that's always my goal permits. that they do everything in a satisfactory manner. The issue becomes though, because that development has been under construction for over a decade, things were in good shape ten years ago. But there's wear and tear things we can't go after them. I don't believe for wear and tear issues, you know, normal wear and tear. Yeah, like I was telling the residents tonight, I think that the HOA may have a legal obligation in the declaration to accept dedication of some common areas when a certain threshold is hit. Other, otherwise, HOAs and developers would be fighting all the time about mm -hmm. what, when, when, and, and what they need to accept. I mean. Ultimately, the purpose of the HOA, as established by the developer in the declaration, is so that the HOA is responsible for the maintenance of those common areas. So I suspect that the declaration probably obligates the HOA to accept dedication of some of the common areas, whether they without you know, condition, whether yeah. they like it or not. I mean, I'm sure the declaration has that type of language to protect the developer because ultimately. The developer oh, really? dra drafted the declaration. Yeah. 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 I'm surprised that they're in certain places. That's the Obviously, we have. You know, a lot of times, the HOA, you know, the developer has a controlling interest because he owns all the lots well, until some point where he doesn't right. have the majority, and, and then it gets turned and, the, and, you know, maybe some of these people have been there for a decade, but now they're in some there will start to be some fees and costs associated with the maintenance that they hadn't paid previously. I mean, I know it's a private development. The township's probably not going to get too involved in ever having to do any issues in there. However, you never know. Yeah. And I don't want to see the township have to get hit. No, but well, aside, oh, aside from that, Jim, I don't want to see, um, especially because there's, plans and processes that go along with making sure everything gets built correctly. I don't want to see the residents get stuck with something that has been uh, band-aided in, mm -hmm. in certain ways. Um, anything that we can protect them from, that's I think the purpose of small government is to get involved when people need protecting and, and as much as possible, be as hands off as you can. But um, there are certain things that we are going to be able to do with with regards to the surety money, where they come to us and say, hey, we did this. We said, Chuck out. Chuck says, no, you didn't. Um, and we have legs to stand on at leverage, so to speak, right. on right. making them do certain things. But there are going to be certain other things. The streetlights are a prime example where we may want to help them, but the bottom line is we can't because the way the agreement was worded. And that becomes a matter between the two civil entities. They'll provide streetlights. It didn't no. say that. No. We'll furnish streetlights. <laughs> <That's laughs> How did that get? They, they were going to provide. They were, gonna, they were going to furnish streetlights. Okay. And they rented them from. Oh, so, so they you have the rental payments to push out. Yeah, right? they provided them in the sense that they were there. But yeah, so as much as we can, yeah. I don't want to see us overexerting. Yeah. But if there are things that we can intervene and help them with, I think we have kind of a, a responsibility yeah. to make sure. No different than any other yep. person yeah, in the community. If there was somebody that was yeah, so doing something so unlawful yeah. or questionable to intervene, and, and my approach is you know, shoot for the sky. We can ask them. We can make a compelling reason for it. But unfortunately, as you say, if there's legal stipulations or whatever, 
we can't guarantee that we'll get the end results, yeah. especially when it comes down to something a little bit subjective, you know, as far as the condition, the wear and tear, mm -hmm. and whether it still right. has adequate service life and what have you. So, uh, anything else, Chuck? Uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay, Colin. I have nothing. Okay, Sue. Nothing. Linda. Okay. Lee's got a question. Yeah. Back. Yes, thank you. Um, so this was brought up on the, the workshop meeting. Um, I don't think we need to amend the agenda because there's no financial aspect of this. Um, the community association has an opportunity to get a trailer donated to them. Um, if they want to put it over on the far side of the playground there for storage. Um, I'm okay with it. I know, Jim, you seemed okay with it. The only question that I had, Lee, is, is the the trailer in pretty decent shape. That was like the one thing I forgot to ask. Okay. Well, I was um, told it was really rusty and you're going to have to paint it. Well, Somebody from the community association told me that, that it was really rusty and you're going to have to paint it. And I also heard that um, the person who's donating it is going to scrap it if you don't take it. That tells me that it's pretty bad. That's not what I heard. Okay, so well, regardless, my my only paint's, point paints cheap. Paints cheap. So the only thing I would say is I'm okay with this. Irene, Irene, uh, you gonna type something, Irene? No, look, or you are? Okay. Have to look good. And we had talked about maybe even contact the high school. Okay. Some okay, Come so, over and put a mural on it. That way, they'll have some ownership in it. Probably use the playground. So Irene says, I'm not in favor of this trailer. I'd want to see it. Is there an opportunity that we could take a look at it? Like you could send us some pictures or something of it? Okay. Yeah. Would, could you give him a call and like send us some pictures? Like text Jim? Okay. Because um, I mean, chances are he'd be okay with waiting until like the next workshop meeting or like Irene, uh, are your concerns around liability, condition of the trailer? Because um, I mean, I, th I think from a liability standpoint, it's no different than the other shed that we have there. Um, contents. Um, so I think, I mean, we'd be covered for that. And we already asked that they keep a roster of it in case there is vandalism or theft or anything like that. Um, but uh, I think it's a, honestly, it's a fair compromise that uh, we can, we can see it, just send us, snap us a picture of it, and then we can give you the, the thumbs up, thumbs down sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Jim, you okay with that? So strong. Okay. I mean, if, if you're not, speak, say your piece. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're a board here. If there's not one one person making the decisions, it's, it's very much a, a quorum. What did you eat? No, you, you'd want to get the you'd want to get the title signed over to the MTCA. You wouldn't want to, yeah. Man, that's taking a while. Bro. Yeah, the community is so something. Because you, yeah. you are you are legally an entity being the MTCA. You have a 501c3. Can you paid arrangements to excavate that. Get it back in so it's level. So, yeah, I, I, like I said. We're going to have to do something soon because it's getting more Yeah. Like I said, I don't have a problem with it. The only concern that I had is like, Somebody had mentioned like what condition it is in, and I was like, I, I don't actually know. So if you can just send us a picture, just as a peace of mind thing, I think you're probably in good shape for getting the okay from the board. But we'll just kind of sign off on that once we see it. So, yeah, send us send us a picture, and if it's in good shape and it's not going to be a safety hazard. Yeah. At, yeah, that's so actually, that's a good point, Colin. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's not on the agenda. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, we technically, do we have to amend the agenda because it's not, like, there's no financial 
it's still putting something on your property. Uh, Colin's the expert. Yeah. yeah. So you, it, if we can wait, let's get get us a picture, and then we'll we'll do any approval or denial at the workshop meeting next month. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So seeing all items closed, I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is nine thirty one p.m. Roll call. Roll call. Uh, Peter. Aye. Irene. Irene <laughs> gives a thumbs up. And Jim. Motion. Benefit, Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.